Former WWE yes. wrestler Al Snow <laughs> choreographed the fight scene in the waterfall with Tara Cardinal, which he performed. And I assume that this has to be that scene because I, then I it says, look up who Al Snow is. <laughs> Due to his extensive wrestling training and extreme strength, he was able to lift her out of the water and above his head while she was fully nude, thus giving him almost nothing to hold on to. And I love that it says almost nothing to hold on to. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh what a, uh, pray tell what he did hold on to. <laughs> How much you want to bet Tara wrote that piece of trivia? 100%. I can't get over. Thus giving him almost nothing to hold on to. It's like, what was he holding on to? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello and welcome back. I don't know what happened there. It's not like I yelled yellow, so I stag. Hello! I just have a dead look in my face right now. Hello and welcome back to the 160th, a nice round number episode. Good, better, bad, better show about shareable movies and tell you if you should too. I'm your host, Mr. Brian Shilligo, joined once again, and as always, by the other host of this established, esteemed show. Hi. <laughs> Mr. Kyle Hinton, Kyle. Uh, it is a typical good, better, bad, bad Brian pick here. Yeah. We go from the action schlock that is a Kyle pick to Brian's narrative insanity. <laughs> True. I would also argue this movie has way more action than your movie. It does. Movie. <laughs> it does. I thought I had a hundred years more to stop what was coming. The demon Lord Ganesh. Uh, and boy, it is just <laughs> as as chaotic. It has just as little relevance to what's going on. It is insane. I love it. I love <laughs> these kind of movies, Kyle. Kyle, this film... I discovered this because I was searched. This was not recommended by anybody. I don't believe mm. I discovered this because I was looking at a previous uh, filmmaker that we have covered yes. on this channel. And I was and I, we won't say who yet. We'll see when we get there because mm. um, they make an appearance in this movie. And I saw that they were in this movie mm -hmm. as an because I was seeing if they had written or directed anything else to do that. And I saw they were starred in this movie, and I was like, okay, let's check this All out. Right, I watched the trailer, and I was the like, goo oh. boy. <laughs> okay. I am the Reaper, Ayla. I am the Red Reaper. Okay. Uh, we'll go right to the title this then. Yes. The Legend of the Red Reaper. Yes. I need you. Two thousand thirteen film written by, directed by, and, and starring, starring Tara Cardinal. <laughs> Tara Cardinal, something like that. Mm -hmm. Uh and she so is a the purest form of an auteur. <laughs> yes, I absolutely love so many things about this movie. And one of them is that this feels so much like watching one of the, like, so often we get movies by a person like a Neil Breen or mm. the guy who did Get Even, or we get a lot of dudes who, like, get on power trips and make their, like, weird, <laughs> horny movies where they, and this movie is that, but for this lady, and I love it for her. <laughs> Using my pants as a tourniquet actually was a good idea. I love it so much because it's so terrible. Oh, God. I think what this is is similar to the person that we will talk about when they show up. Mm. That she, this the, the writer-director of this is like an author, like a book author kind of deal. Or maybe not. Maybe was specifically wanted to get into film, but it wouldn't surprise me if she was she doing She has quite a books. bit of credits, and she's yeah. still working, too. Yeah, she, and she's, like, she's acting and other stuff and producing and working on other stuff. Um, so maybe not, maybe it is just a film thing, but it wouldn't surprise mm. me. Cause to me, this felt like somebody who writes fantasy literature, yes. trying to translate that to a film. She goes to a lot of Ren's fair. Yes. Which, no hate, because I go to a lot of Ren things. Brian gets a turkey leg every time. <laughs> I actually don't know if I've ever had it. I think once. I've, I think once. Ugh. 
I, there's lots of other good food. I mean, there Ferris. definitely is. You got to go there and get get the what do they call the the Swanson right turkey leg wrapped in bacon. Oh yeah, I haven't, seen, I, haven't, I, haven't, I, haven't I haven't yeah I haven't seen that one. Um, I love the I love the corn on the cob like the, the grilled corn. Anyways, doesn't matter. Um, point Getting being too distracted. <laughs> too distracted. Point being, yes, Ren Fairs play a huge role in this film. I would imagine. But the the, the reason I felt like it it felt like a an, an author is that there's so much like lore and world building yes. that it's just kind of like thrown at us really quickly <laughs> yes. at the beginning. It's been a century since the Teller Witch, my mother, traded me to the demon lord Ganesh, the sacred clan of Reapers. All of us, the spawn of rape. The unholy union of demon and human. Uh, the opening of this movie is like a, a Lord of the Rings style prologue kind of mm. deal. And it's just an info dump of names and places <laughs> yes. and wars that I do not know or care about at all. It's nonsense. Um, but before we even get to the prologue, we get some incredible. Um, we open with a Genghis Khan quote. <laughs> Yes. For some reason, does this this doesn't even take place on Earth? No. Does Genghis Khan exist in the universe of this movie, Kyle? I'm but, not uh, even sure. Basically, the quote I love too is just the quote they use boils you, down to: "If you didn't suck so bad, I wouldn't be yes, murdering you, exactly. Genghis Khan." That's the fucking quote. <laughs> if if you weren't worthy of this punishment, yeah. I wouldn't be here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Victim blaming the quote like it's just incredible. Um. Uh, and, how, and I don't know the context of how it even fits into the movie. But anyways, then we get our, our production company logos, which give off real big uh, graphic de design <laughs> yes. is my passion energy. They're so bad. I love it so much. I, I, I had a demo reel in college. <laughs> yeah, I, I took one uh, Photoshop class in, yeah, in uh, my freshman year of college. Oh, goodness. It's incredible. Uh, but then we launch into the actual film proper and we open up with this really interesting. I don't know where they got this location. It's that like Viking looking house. Oh, on. Yeah, that looks like that's a that looks like they built that. Yeah, right. It's a real yeah. set I, somewhere. I, I thought don't... at first that this was like a some fake compositing. And no, boy, there are some. Li there fake are. Oh, yes. Later. The castle. Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but no, this no. looks like a legitimate thing that was built because there's a shot later where we get this big soaring mm -hmm. like helicopter shot and flying. A lot up of the helicopter it. stuff I thought was stock at first until we started is. getting actors in the yeah. frame. And I was like, holy I don't, shit. I don't think it is. I think they blew all of their money on those like four helicopters helicopter shots the thing is and that big battle <laughs> i'm pretty damn sure that's the italy second unit oh uh, yeah yeah yeah. that would make sense mm. that would make sense because it definitely doesn't look like america <laughs> like where no. this is being filmed no. like it looks way like too Swiss pretty <laughs> yeah yeah it's like way too mountainous well not that there are but like it just doesn't yeah it, it, it mm. looks like yeah somewhere in europe for sure but we we jump right in there's like a scouring of the shire type thing happening i don't like we get these aerial shots of these armies like running through a yeah. market or something which yes. we use like a thousand yes, times it's... in this fucking movie um but we're introduced to the bad guy uh what is his name it's not ganon but it's like ganish, ganish i believe yeah. is his name my mother traded me to the demon lord ganish my biological father immortal and evil who's a spiky eyebrow guy <laughs> Okay, he's, so he's he's Christopher e Christopher Eccleston's character from Thor: The Dark, dark World, the mm. like Dark Elf or whatever. He's that guy. It's uh, crazy. It's, this looks like they got somebody who worked on Star Trek at one point yes. doing the aliens, yeah. and then that's that's glue the some spikes that they on have. their eyebrows and paint them white, baby. Uh, and, and, and it was just like paint, so everything to to the neck, right? Yeah, they're not, they're not gonna see the the they anything else. No, 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 no. They're not gonna see exposed hands no, or no. okay. Just paint the face white. <laughs> Nothing else. <laughs> But he's our bad guy, and we I, I think what I could gather of this like setup is that our main character, uh, I Ayla, Ella, whatever her name mm. is. I am the Reaper Ayla. Uh, the Red Reaper is her mother, the the Teller Witch, or something the like seer. that. She's like a seer. She has future sight. That's, yeah, they call her the Teller Witch, I believe, or mm. something like that. Is our main character's mom, and she gave birth, she she had her with the Lord Gainish, like she's part demon. Yes. And then she gave she's, the daughter to this demon guy. 
It's the worst custody <laughs> battle I've ever seen. Traded him with... Uh, I don't even know. He traded her... her traded her for his blood. Yes, basically. So, so he, that here can, is pure demon blood for you. And then she can use the pure demon blood to, like, live forever. Mm. Imbued with magical healing properties. Addicted. His blood would keep my mother young and healthy. Forever. So, but then... So, so, uh, Ayla, our main character, was then raised by demons for, like, a while and, like... For 40 years. Tortured by them? Yeah. Yeah, so, so, sh this was... I think a hundred years ago. Yeah. Yes. So this is why t time is irrelevant in this because it's all over the place. It's everywhere. But Ayla is like a hundred years old yeah. and spent four, the first 40 years of her life being tortured by demons. Tortured by demons. For 40 years, I was a plaything at the mercy of my immortal demon ancestors. And I love we get like a really quick montage of this. And one of them is her naked being po power slammed <laughs> by a guy. <laughs> And I, yeah. I only recognized that that's what that was because I was looking through the trivia facts on IMDb and I have to read this trivia fact. Former WWE yes. wrestler Al Snow <laughs> choreographed the fight scene in The Waterfall with Tara Cardinal, which he performed. And I assume that this has to be that scene because I, then I gotta it says look up who Al Snow is. Due to his extensive wrestling training and extreme strength, he was able to lift her out of the water and above his head while she was fully nude, thus giving him almost nothing to hold on to. And I love that it says almost nothing to hold on to. <laughs> what? Oh what uh, pray tell what he did hold on to. <laughs> How much you want to bet Tara wrote that piece of trivia? 100%. Thus giving him almost nothing to hold on to. It's like, what was he holding on to? <laughs> I love it. Um, oh, so then man. she's able, uh, she's rescued by the Reapers. And then came a glimmer of hope. I was rescued. Rescued by my people. The sacred clan of Reapers. And she vows to become a warrior so powerful that the demons can't fuck with her anymore. And so she's raised then by the Reapers, who are this clan of like... They're basically witchers. Essentially, <laughs> I think is what they're going for. They're basically like a witcher, like demon hunter type mm -hmm. people. It was the Reapers who fought the demons into exile. And even though we are shunned by our human forefathers, we are sworn to protect them against the unrelenting cruelty of demon kind. But they're, they're all, all like spawn spawn rape? demon rape. They yeah, say? they're all half demons. Yeah. Which is the only way to make sense on the age of some of them because I guess it, it let's just bullshit and say being a half demon gives you extended life. I guess that must be what it is because they're all like very old. Yeah. Like we, the guy mentions later, one of the other guys, the big guy, mm -hmm. he's like uh, talking about how him we, and the blind we were, were here 200 years yeah, ago. Yeah, dating Or even years like, ago or uh, do you remember our first time was in these woods? That was 200 years ago. So they can apparently like live forever or something because demon blood extends life, which is why her mom wanted mm. it to begin with, I think. Um, so anyways, that was our whole prologue. We finally got all of the information backlog out of the way. <laughs> I was like, okay. It also, we got to set up. There was a prophecy that she will be the final reaper. I am the reaper, Ayla. I am the red reaper. And if the prophecies of old are to come true, I am to be the last of my kind. We cut into her room or like into the village or the castle mm. and she's like getting ready to go out for the night or something and she's like gearing up and we get this already the Ren Faire costumes of all of the extras and it's just mm. incredible. Um, we also get this weird cheeky little freeze frame on her where she's like it's very I don't know whatever it's very strange but then she runs uh, vertically up the wall. Did you notice this? When she leaves her bedroom, she like wall runs <laughs> out the window or this something? This is where the compositing oh gets rough. Oh my God, Kyle. Oh my God. Uh, there's a lot of stuff where she, they have this <clears throat> very bad running, a, like, like a long shot, composited long shot of her running across this castle. And steel. She will see the f imbued with the strength of- Then they get to some close-ups and there is zero spill suppression on this close-up. You can see every bit of green in her hair. It's the worst green screening I've seen in something in a long time. 
and and, and it, it's held it's not even it, it's amazing it's made even worse by the fact that she's there, she's green screen composited into like running across the top of these like ramparts in this castle and the castle is a terrible like cg asset itself <laughs> so it's all and it's all in like five frames per second she's like it's 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 truly horrifying it's nightmare oh and also it's all day for night this yes. entire movie kyle is day for night it was no 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 reason it was just day right well but no they they were they they thought they were doing no day for i night. know that's my joke is <laughs> no it was just day <laughs> uh, we get a shot we literally it's day for night we get a shot looking directly into, into the, the sun, sun. <laughs> There are so many shots that are insanely overexposed. Yes! It's the worst day for night I've ever seen in my life. I love in this one of these earlier shots where she's like running through the castle. We get the day for night. It's like a shot looking up at the sky. And you can see where they like colored in the sky between the branches to be like purple. <laughs> like like it was nighttime. It's so bad. It's so bad. I love there, it. There's so a lot much. of parts where she's walking through the woods and there's these areas of of light and shadow the thing that blew my mind most about this is why did they do it day for night i don't why know. wouldn't you just set your story during you know the I, day i don't know the complications that we're in of so i do apologize for calling them idiots <laughs> sorry i'll cut that part out <laughs> just i just don't understand why you wouldn't be like oh well these fights can just happen during the day i uh, whatever uh, whatever yeah uh, um, so then we're introduced to Mr. Chin. I don't know his name. He's just got a very chiseled chin. Oh, Eris, mm. Eris, that's his name. <laughs> this is, yes, the this love is interest. The, uh, the love interest. Okay, so they are coming close to the celebration of his 25th birthday. His coronation. I'd like to thank everyone for coming to help us celebrate Eris's 25th birthday and his coronation as the first king of Enid. First off, this guy is clearly in his late 30s, At if least, not 40s. Yeah, yeah. Not, not a 25-year-old man. No. Uh, absolutely not. No. Uh, very handsome. Good chin, though. Mm -hmm. uh, she's in love with him, but she can't. they can't be together because she's a reaper, I guess. The movie explains, okay. tries to tell us this like eight times. And although I tried to resist, I was in love with the one man I could never have. And I'm still not convinced of why they can't be together. It's something to do with her being a reaper. I guess because she'll live forever and he'll die because he's a mortal human, maybe. Yeah. Or something. But anyways, her her dad, her 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 non-demon dad guy mm. with the white hair tells her so many times, like, you can't be together. It's against our laws or whatever. Stop telling me what to Don't do. To do or what to me say. On this, Ayla. Eris will be the first king these lands have ever seen, and I will not have my wayward daughter screwing that up. Those are the rules. But we, when they're first introduced, we get like this meet cute, and it was like, while it was happening, I was like, the, the interaction was so weird. Ayla of Roggenborg, Reaper. I'm here to grant audience to his majesty. So it is the Red Reaper herself, the youngest, fastest, strongest of all the Reapers. The interaction felt so stilted and weird that I was like, is this like, are they acting? And they are. So yes. it actually kind of works. Yes. They're like role playing. The beginning of it, I rolled my eyes clear out of my skull yeah. on how ridiculous this acting was. I love because he says to her, he goes, so it is the Red Reaper herself, the youngest, strongest, and smartest of the Reapers. I was like, a line this actress wrote about herself. <laughs> and then we get into them like, oh, this is just an act. Whom do you serve? I serve only Eris of Enid, the handsomest man in all the land, of which I commit no further crime. My life for Eris. Yeah. Thank God. He picks her up and pushes her against a tree and they make out. I swear your allegiance. I swear it. You're my one true love, Ayla. Because I guess they are like seeing each other, mm -hmm. even though they're not supposed to be or something. It's very confusing. Um, so, yeah, they are making out. And I was like, you know, that makes sense because this did feel like porn leading up to <laughs> so much of this movie feels again yep. like we are watching the non porn yep. parts of porn. It's really upsetting. At least meet me by the lake. I've got some practice with the Krios. After that, then.
I watch porn for the fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what this feels like for sure. Um, uh, but then we get like the, the the like a dinner toast scene, and I was really impressed by her ability to to cast old dudes with beards. There's so many mm-hmm. old guys with once beards again rinse fair. Yeah, that's a true. bunch of old dudes with yeah, beards. Yeah, that's fair. That is yep, that's fair. That's true, a hundred percent. So they're they're like doing a toast to his twenty fifth coronation or whatever. There we go. Yeah, my, uh, yeah, <laughs> I know, is my hair's just everywhere. All over the place. Um. But anyway, so they, they're having a, uh, they, they like do a toast first thing. And then she goes, basically they're like, and you will pick your wife. And they like gesture to this girl who's sitting out there. And this upsets uh, Ayla. So she like runs up to the ramparts where her dad comes to have a conversation with her. And also her <laughs> costume. I got to talk about, she wears these red and black leather van braces that are the cheesiest, like. Yes. Again, you clearly got those at a Ren Fair. <laughs> like, just they're just so. Uh... She, I will say, I don't know how much of this is is uh, acting versus personal experience. She nails piss off. I'm angry. Like it's nobody's business. Because yeah. her, her adoptive father is trying to be like, well, you have to think reasonably of this. Yo, we're sworn to protect this. We have a duty. She's like, yeah, don't care. <laughs> yeah. Is the dinner starting already? We still have a few minutes. I should get ready then. Ayla. You know, I actually will say, it's something I thought about as the movie was going on, that I don't think most of their performances are terrible. No, they're, they're not. They're, like, I thought her and everybody, like, their performances are okay. I know how much I Love is not for us. Our life is serving and protecting. It's just they're enveloped in a the worst produced mm-hmm. movie I've like ever seen. It's just like yeah, they, every they other... had good principle like cast. Yeah, yeah, it's not yeah. the worst. Yeah, they're not terrible. It's just every other technical aspect mm-hmm. of the film is complete <laughs> garbage. You know, it just doesn't work. <laughs> But again, he explains once again that love is not for us uh, and that she has to serve and protect humans and she can't fall in love with the prince or whatever. Once again, would be nice to know why. I, 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 yeah, I, again, I guess because they live forever. Why are you sworn to protect the humans? Because they're the reapers, Kyle. What does that mean? They're the, re- they're the reapers, Kyle. <laughs> That's what they do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Your grandfather, Gawain, used to tell me that the world of man had to rise and fall by the hand of man alone and without the influence of the demonic. We're the seeds of those demons, and it's time for us to stand aside and let humans rule themselves. But then she goes to, we cut to her training, and we're introduced to Krios, who is not in the credits for this movie on IMDb. Really? I could not find this That's actor, because I, I searched the, the, the character's name. He's not in the, I don't know what, mm. I don't know if he removed himself from the credits or what happened, but I could not find him in there. Um, but he's like her trainer, uh, and he's like, they're like doing all this training, and then she has like a PTSD like attack and like snaps and starts oh beating the shit out of this one chick yeah yeah (laughs) yeah, she thinks all of a sudden that she's fighting like the demons Mm. and then so she starts beating the shit out of her training partner and Krios is like bro calm down it's kind of weird um yeah just put some ice on that (laughs) Uh, and then her dad shows up and is talking to her, and she like snaps on her dad and tries to punch him because again he tells her you can't love or whatever. Mm. <laughs> then that evening we cut to her bed chambers and we get this shot where she's like getting undressed and she has she, so because she's part demon, mm. she is eternally growing like demon scales, scales and she has to like pumice stone I, I, them off of that, them. No, that wasn't a pumice stone. That was a loofah oh, sponge. Loofah, yeah, sorry. Loofah. Of, of all the things, like, okay, thank God that in this uh, this world where we have a, a Renaissance fair-esque everything, and uh, there are, uh, there's like no medicine, no. and there's like, like, it's a, a it's, it's a medieval, it's, it's, yeah, yeah, it's, it's like medieval, medieval style. Mysticism. And they're like, oh, thank God they, they invented this loofah. <laughs> Loofahs are real. Yeah, I, I guess, but like they're, they're like creatures. Were they commonly like sea creatures. Were they commonly farmed? Oh, I have no at idea. This point? I have no idea. That I don't know. But yeah, you said invented. I was like, <laughs> not yet. <laughs> yeah, uh, but yeah, a product. It's not like a synthetic. It's not like a loofah you get from Walmart. You know, it's yes. made out of like nylon or whatever. I think that was. <laughs> oh no, no, it it's one of the whatever. natural. It's one of the natural ones for sure. Brian it definitely knows. Is. I, I have no experience with loofahs. I use loofahs all the time. I love a loofah. Gets me clean, Kyle.
<laughs> uh, but anyway, so she's got to scrape off her demon oh, scales God. every night, uh, and so we get we get a close up of the terrible makeup effect that they've done to yes. her back, and they blended terribly. Basically, and, just did like this uh, rubbery latex where they just paste it under her back. Yeah, uh, and then while this is happening, we get flashbacks to the scenes from five minutes ago. Mm-hmm. The scene where she had her little encounter with Eris. We flash back to that already, and she's like, "I love you," and he basically like wants to propose to her but can't or what? It's mm. I don't know. It's it's all. Uh, I got it, and Kyle has already said it, but I got to stress, this is one of those ones where trying to explain what is happening is not going to make any sense. Yes, because the, the narrative Brian, is everywhere. The your narrative, narrative makes, makes no, no sense. sense. Yes. <laughs> Say the line, Brian. <laughs> Say the line, Bart. The narrative makes no sense. Yay! <laughs> <sighs> Is this is what my life is, Kyle. <laughs> Sometimes I play a game with Andre. While I meditate, he tries to track me. He'll never find me up here. But anyways, the other lady who he wants to might marry, who's like a like an actual like noble or mm. you know like a human, um, is, is is we're introduced to her and she comes up to Ayla and was like, "Hey, we should have a truce." None of this matters, by the way. I don't mm. even know why I'm telling you about this. She's like, "We should have a truce." Before the coronation, and then he'll pick one of us, and then the next scene, they both just hit on him separately. Like, yes. they, don't, they break there, the there truth. Was, there, so there's a point part where uh, the woman that he is like being forced to marry, or she's he's being suggested yeah, yeah, to marry. Yeah, yeah. They're like going through the market and and looking over jewelry and stuff, and the the dagger in her eyes as, as yes. Red Reaper is, is she's you looking at this. How dare we made a truce? I was like, I'm about ready to say, are we about ready to do some single white female shit going on in here? <laughs> we made a truce and you backstabbed me. Watch this, I'm gonna backstab you now. So yeah, they both break the truce immediately. She go I, there's a little scene where she goes back, and who is the guy? Is it just like her friend, the big dude, the buff guy? I think he, he's this is another reaper. Guardian is, is is his is job. His name? Okay. I, so I like I guess he's just like a, a sin. Just a century. Well, I didn't like, know what her, her his relationship to her was. Yeah. They're just like friends, I guess. I, I guess like since she is the prophecy or whatever, uh, his job is he's to, like the protector. Yeah. Okay, I guess that would make sense. But they're like sitting in their room and and fucking Varys from Game of Thrones. Yes, well, yes, that's exactly. That's, what that's I who this character is supposed to be. I feel like. <laughs> I have a message from his soon to be highness. Fucking Varys from Game of Thrones comes in and is like reciting lewd poetry to her from mm-hmm. the prince from Eris. I, I don't even know. It's such a weird scene. <laughs> Sunshine, you are my very thought when I awaken. It is for you that I rise in the morning. <laughs> It's very strange, um, but the whole time the other guy's just laughing at her, and I was like, I don't even know what's going on. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Thank you, Perry. Then we get another training scene, and I only have to talk about this because we get a great moment in it where she's training with Krios, and they're like sword fighting, and I don't remember what prompts this. But she says to Krios, I am nothing like my mother. And then after she says that, she growls like a tiger. <laughs> She's like, rawr, rawr, rawr. I am nothing like my mother. This is why you are not ready. It's so silly. Uh, Ooh, then Krios it- is like, fuck you. I'm not training you You're anymore. dead to me. Find someone else to train yes. you. Yes. Find someone else to train you. You are dead to me. <laughs> <laughs> you are dead to me. Dead to me. Then she but he stabs does him. Yes. Krios. <laughs> Any other Reaper would have died from a wound like this. I'm sorry, Krios. You know better. But, like, this is a... This, I'm not sure if you picked up on, I'm, I'm sure you picked up on this. You, this is her scene into the future. Is it? Yes. I don't know. Yes. Sure. I mean, I believe you. I'm just saying, but I don't know. She's acting on what she sees in the future in the present, and it causes that to happen. Oh, okay. So it's brilliant. You're saying it's brilliant. No. 
<laughs> no, it's really bad. <laughs> but anyway, so she uh, so she stabs Krios. Mm. I'm not even sure. Again, it must be something to do with the f- whatever. Yeah. But then what is this? He she stabs him. He's like fuck you, and then he bites her neck like a vampire. No! No! <laughs> Check. There's the next one. All right. Let's keep making our way through. The, <laughs> making making our way checklist. Way through the checklist. All right. When, uh, when somebody dies later, I'm gonna make sure I play in the arms of an angel. We get to that. Let's see what else do we need. Kyle, you got to mispronounce something at some yep. point. All right. Yep. <laughs> um. But yeah, he like bites her like a vampire, and then we just move on, and I don't know what the fuck that was. <laughs> This is why you are not ready. Find someone else to train you. Let's, I'll call her instead of Ayla, it's Aeola. <laughs> there you go, perfect, perfect, perfect. Areola. Areola. Yeah. There, there you go. go. Whoosh, nailed, nailed it. it. <laughs> um, so anyways, yeah, I don't I don't know what's going on there. I thought I was, uh, he's not a vampire, but he does bite the shit out of her neck. Um, then we just cut, and again, these scenes are all just, nothing connects in a way that makes any sense yeah because like now now she's just she's just fucking wandering through the woods wandering and finds a woman with a baby yes and i'm like what is by the way that (laughs) what just that baby the whole like oh yeah the the very clearly fake baby yes yeah in a little bundle bradley cooper in that thing yeah yeah, in the yeah american sniper whatever absolutely um but so she she fights a bunch of dudes and saves this woman with a baby but then it's all a trap She gets turned into a porcupine. A pin cushion, yes. man. She gets turned into a fucking pin cushion. They shoot like 30 arrows into her back. down and there's just a million arrows sticking out of her back it's hilarious um and then so the woman like double crossed her and was like luring her in Mm. and then they take her back to like their lair which i do i do like how their plan to trap her was to just be like all right you you and you you're just gonna die from sword combat and then we'll bring in the shoot a bunch of arrows at her yeah and they're like wait a second this plan sucks (laughs) <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, they bring her back, and then she wakes up because I guess she can't die. Mm. I, well, we find out later the other demons you have to kill them by cutting their heads off. So maybe reapers are similar because they have like park maybe. demon. I don't know, but she has a million arrows in her. Well, no, because the 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 big Hulkin dude didn't get his head cut off, and he got. Oh yeah, you're right. I don't spoiler, know. Spoiler, he dies. Yeah, spoiler. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I I don't know why she doesn't die here. But anyway, she doesn't die. Uh, and they're like drinking her blood because she yes. has demon blood and like pulling the arrows out and shit and like torturing her. And I wasn't even sure who these people were. And we ultimately will find out that they're like a competing kingdom. Yes, they like work. They're like a faction within the kingdom that wants to like usurp the throne. Mm. Basically, I think. Um, and these are some of the lower level guys, and they need her blood in order to create like a super army. Now you get in there and fight like I taught you to or I'll send you to hell with the rest of those reapers. I think is the idea so they can Yes, the because these people drink her blood and become like- Rage monsters. Yeah. yeah. Humans that stole your blood have been influenced by Ganesh. Your blood will strengthen that handful into an army. Uh, we get more demon flashbacks to spiky eyebrow guys as she's just like sitting there. Then some lady shows up, freezes time terribly. (laughs) Still. And 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 steals her away, and this is her mom, uh, yeah. the witcher, whatever, um, witch lady. Um, but the shot of the frozen guy in time, he's like, <sighs> with the sword. It's hilarious. It's amazing. She steals her away, and brings her home. Um, and then, we, and this is where we're introduced to the whole reason we watch this movie. Yes. Her sister, her half sister, uh, and I don't know the character's name, but she is played by Shane Layden, 
who is who? the writer, director, and star Mani no! of the Incubus. Yes. <laughs> give away your blood. Absolutely. Mani, so, don't do it. Come back. Marley, don't do it. Please. Marley, don't do it. Don't do it. So that was 100%. I was looking to see if she had other movies going on, if we could watch one of those. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I saw that she was in this, and that's how we got to watching this. Uh, but this is her her character. She's in these scenes. She is the half-sister of a Ayala. She's your sister. Half-sister. The ugly half. And hates her because... I don't... For, for reasons. Demon. Because she's... Yeah, sure. Because she's a demon or something like that. You brought her here? Mother, she's half demon. And this, I will say this is a, at this point, I was like, you know, this is, this whole thing is like tropey and cliche, but I think this story could work if you like hammered it out yeah. and figured out a way yeah. and did it completely differently. This, this is definitely like, it's like the M. Night Shyamalan thing. You come up with an idea, maybe write it out where you want it, but bring it to somebody else yeah. to look over well, it. At that and the, the biggest issue I think is that she wrote, directed everything. She did everything. Mm -hmm. And so it's the production quality is just, she, she doesn't know how to make movies. And so being the main person making this movie, she had quite a bit of crew at yeah. different points because you can tell I mean, there are scenes. Brian, you're telling me that if you're the writer, director, actor, and even the editor <laughs> of your own film, that it's going to come out with, Reduce quality? Not necessarily. I mean, I'll tell you it does. <laughs> I would say not necessarily if you know what you're doing. Yeah. But if you don't know what you're doing, absolutely. True. I guess Robert Rodriguez would be the exception to that. There are people that can do it, but you have to be incredibly talented. Uh, yeah. It's Which just... I am not. <laughs> hey. Hey. Did you uh, forget something? Yeah. Uh, uh... Fair enough. No, Kyle, what are you talking about? You're super talented. Yay. <laughs> I don't have to drink the pills tonight. <laughs> I don't know. I'm losing it. So, anyways, her mom, the witch, feeds her demon blood to heal her. Yes. Will demon blood hurt a reaper? It will change her. How? No one knows. That is why it is forbidden. So then, then this whole thing, she's the next like 15 minutes of this movie are fever dream, basically. Yes. Yes. Like, literally, it's all just a dream, right? And it's chaos. This this whole like 13 minute sequence or something like yes. that should have been two. Oh my god. Most. Oh my god, Kyle. I have so many notes where that I'm just like, I need this to end. Kyle, I need this yes. to end. We've been doing the same thing for like 20 we minutes. We are 40 minutes in. We know she's not dying from this. Yes. Get over Get it. Get over And it's just the same scenes over and over again. So many scenes of like her like f fighting with her inner demons forever. Mm. Over and over. Oh my God. I, I was, uh. Yes, Miss Hanukkah. Fight your way back. No. <laughs> I will say there's this one scene in this in particular where uh, it's right off right after she gets the demon blood and starts having all the fever dreams where um, I believe it's spiky eyebrows guy has a sword mm -hmm. and she's standing there. And this is again, I think this was from the past. She's having a like a fever dream memory of a thing that happened previously. And he has a sword and he's like pointing it at her and he orders her to back up against the tree Oh, and he stakes and her then to puts it. her and then he goes and put your hands around the tree and now stand up on your toes. <laughs> and I feel like and then he stabs her and pins her to the tree with the sword. And that scene in particular. Hands down. I feel like I got I learned something very specific and personal about this writer director. Yeah. The way that scene comes across to me, I was like, I see what's going on here. I see what's going on here. I'll just leave it at that. I feel like this whole movie exists 
for her to have filmed those scenes. But we'll just leave it Gotta at get that. Her, her kink on, right? <laughs> Kind of what it felt like to me a little bit. Kind of what it felt like. Hands down. On your toes. I think we just had another writer's orgasm. But anyway, so, so she misses it. <laughs> What? Just like I, 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 I need to be uh, dominated, and I need extreme blood loss. Yeah, I, I look. I'm just saying. I felt like I learned something very specific and personal about this writer director from watching a few scenes in this movie. Uh, and you know, good for you. Yeah, <laughs> glad you were able to make that happen. Uh, she misses her date with Eris because she's dead, which is sad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's she's unconscious for a week. Yeah. Ella. Uh, also, it was killing me that some of these because we didn't cut. We do have a flash where we cut to some of the other villains. Uh, like the main villain guy who's trying to usurp the throne, we're introduced yeah, the to him. Yeah, the French dude. Like, he's got a very French and he's name. He's got like a beard, and, and yeah. we're, him and his son, his I son. think. And and they're, uh, this whole scene is mm. shot in like a dark room, and the way it's lit to me looked like a 90s TV so, show. It, did you get it? Yes. First of all, you're not that old. Didn't I tell you? Before the good doctor got his specimen, uh, had myself a nasty little accident. This looked guy, like, has, it looks like, are you afraid of the dark or something? This guy has a great beard. Yes, but a voice that is unable to back it up. <laughs> I ask you to round me up an army, and you bring me three men. <laughs> Sorry, my man. I, I thought he was <laughs> fine. I, I didn't have any issues with his voice. Um, but anyway, so they're they're like, basically, he's mad at his son for not because she got away like she they were yes. able to get rescued so yes. he's like we got to go finish the job or whatever he, he he does have some great lines in here where uh he has his son rally up some of the some of the boys to to go uh start up in our army and stuff and he's like you got three people <laughs> i should have had a daughter at least she could have wiggled her tits and the men would have flocked to her father i'm sorry once I... again i'm gonna have to show you how it's done it's like, what is... yeah it's wild um, uh, and then we, again, she's chained to a tree with a sword through her stomach and she's having like romantic dreams and moaning a lot. And I'm like, yeah. mm. again, ah, mm. I feel like I know what's going on here. <laughs> I was like, normally, you know what? Normally when we're watching this kind of a thing in a movie, it's some creepy dude. So like mm -hmm. we got, we got to even that out a little bit. <laughs> She wakes up. She, she's able to come to. She survives. Yes. And then she ha gets in a conversation with her mom. And she's actually very mad at her mom because her mom was drinking demon blood to stay young. Uh, and, and, and she's just mad that she made that trade. She's like, how dare you trade me to Ganesh so you could get demon blood just so you could be young and pretty forever or whatever. That's some dog shit. You gave me to that demon. Listen to me. You've been having the visions, seeing the prophecies. impossible but because she was asleep for a week it is now the night of the coronation mm -hmm. we've whoop, jumped way ahead in time um and so it's our big final act but also there's like half the movie left we're like yeah you look at the timeline you're like what what yeah i was like literally at the 45 minute mark this a movie's an hour and 40 minutes long and i'm like this is the third act like point like this is this should be the third act and it is it's just the third act is most of the movie i did get up and once that happened i paused i was like <laughs> I'm gonna need another soda. <laughs> uh, then we cut. We have a random cut in of uh, the big boy. I don't remember his name. What is his name? Uh, not 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 the no, unit. No. We'll get to that guy the, the in unit. a second. The <laughs> yeah. absolute lad. We'll yeah. get to him in a minute. That guy's incredible. Uh, no, I'm talking about the uh, guardian or whatever. Uh, um, Adonis. I think. Is that his name? I think it's, I think oh, is it? Adonis. Okay. Yeah. Um, I call him the big boy. Uh, but he, because he's a big big dude. Mm. He he's fucking the blonde girl in the woods, and it's just it completely yes. irrelevant. I don't understand why. Why this is in the movie it has nothing to do with anything it's literally just so he can go a hundred years ago we were fucking in these woods just like this so i'm like what yep. okay great oh, okay um uh, th there is a point where uh, where the, the the attack is happening right it's just starting up it's just starting. and uh he he tells her you gotta you gotta uh, take care of the women i'm gonna stay behind and make sure you get your save i'll meet up with you at the village 
I'm not leaving you, Andre. Please. We have no choice. Get them to safety. I was like, okay, dude, you could not put a bigger sign on your back that says you get killed. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, which he does. He gets fucking murdered. Um, and meanwhile... Uh, uh, Much later I, than I thought. Though. Yeah. <laughs> meanwhile, Ayala is running to get to the... The, the castle and it's just so many shots of her just running through the woods <laughs> yes. and and I love there's one in particular where she's running and she stops and she's like is that is it oh no it's this way and then just keeps running <laughs> what are we doing you are in love we, we get a great line by uh, 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 Eris who's talking about her and he's like, she's brilliant without being educated. She's brilliant without being educated. She has beauty without worldly trinkets. She could best a hundred men in battle without losing her breath. Talking about uh, Ayala or whatever. It's, it's just very funny that she wrote those lines about, again, the character yes. she is playing is very funny to me. God, I love hearing my words come out of somebody's mouth and sound like that. Uh, so anyways, then we'll get to the big final battle. Uh, the, 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 the son, who's like a coward, doesn't want to fight, so his mm -hmm. dad forces him forces to drink, him to drink rage. Blood. Yeah, the rage demon blood. <laughs> and then sends him into battle. Um, and I think, yeah, and they're, they're going after, they're, they're going to try to take over the throne or whatever. This, my son, is how you take a castle. Tonight, we take back what is ours. And then uh, we get, like, again, more shots of, like, the big scouring, like, of the Shire shots from the beginning, which mm -hmm. I, I guess that was flash forward. They're, yeah, they're, 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 like, like they're, they're sending in all these... This is... I, I, I have to imagine this is Cinema 4D they're using, but there is this overhead shot of them sending the men out of the forest to attack the yeah. castle and it's just the same model copied over and over and over not good it's not good it's not great it's not great uh i also didn't know who was attacking them or why in this moment other yep. than it's that guy but i didn't know his motivation i he was introduced like 10 minutes ago in the movie mm -hmm. the beard guy don't know what he's doing he, i guess he wants the throne i get okay why why is this why is he threatening why like what is going on yeah none none of this is ever set up in any way at all they all are like supercharged on the rage blood uh also the girl again we have so many irrelevant scenes the girl who eris was gonna marry that was human we get a scene where she she finds her dad dead yeah <laughs> Yes. Why is that in the? We don't care oh, about okay. them. We don't know who. She's barely irrelevant at all. Yeah. And, uh, whatever. It's so stupid. Come on. We gotta get you out of here. No. No, I don't. My father. There's nothing we can do about it. Let's go. Then uh, the big guy and the blonde have their kissy moment, and this is what you're talking yes. about, where he's like, I'll go be a hero. I'll see you very soon, and I won't be dead. <laughs> and then he leaves. I'm like, all right, yeah, that's that's what's going okay. on there. I'll meet up with you in the village. <laughs> Meanwhile, Eris, I guess, got uh, hurt at some point because Ayella and some other dude drag him yeah, to a dra barn. Yes. And I, don't, I didn't realize what was going on here. Uh, and I was like, oh, it's Eris. And then... I think this is the squire to uh, the guardian dude. Because I think this dude pop... I, ca I called him feathered hair guy. Yes, yes. Uh, he, he makes quips and stuff. Yes, like he's he a jokey quippy. guy. Yeah, he also does. Uh, one of the, yeah, uh, yeah, yes. I think so, yeah. Yes, I was like, no, feathered no, hair guy. Feather guy yeah. <laughs> uh, he does make a quip to her. Uh, you should Maybe you should use your pants as a tourniquet. He's bleeding. You could use your trousers as a tourniquet. Oh, they look better on Eris's arm anyway. <laughs> oh, we got, we'll get to that scene. Oh my, God. Kyle, I almost lost <laughs> my mind. I didn't realize that he said that to yes. her. Yes. Either way, it's still ridiculous. We'll get to it in just a second. But so anyways, she goes in and like drags his body away. And then the feathered hair guy has to fight the biggest motherfucker. Yes. This guy, again, an absolute unit. Just holy shit. Go, 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 go. <laughs> He, he, this is the definition of, of, uh, 
immovable object, yeah, dude. I, absolutely. <laughs> he's like, it's like they got their own Andre the Giant, man. Mm. Like, he's just a gigantic human being. Because they get into a fist fight, and he throws some haymakers, and the guy's just like... <laughs> <laughs> I, the whole time I was like just in awe of the absolute <laughs> size of this lad. <laughs> Good lord. Oh, okay. Then we cut to her, and this is it. It's so good. <laughs> we cut to her, and she's tending to Eris's Eris, and we get an ADR line of her going. Using my pants as a tourniquet actually was a good idea. And then it cuts to a wide, and she is in her leather underwear. Straddling this guy. I was like, what is going Again, Kyle, I am learning very specific <laughs> and personal things about this writer and director. Like, what is oh, this scene, God. Kyle? What is this scene? It's incredible. Paris? Eris? Oh my god. And then he died. I thought he died anyways. Yes. He yes. seems to. He, he seems to die. She takes... I, lo I love how this is an issue for, for the Reapers. She takes a, uh, this chunk of sword that was embedded in her out, and she tries to cut her wrist and there's like to, feeding to feed him, him blood. blood. But she can't cut her wrist because she's a half demon. It's amazing. It's amazing. This whole time, she's just in leather lingerie. I cannot stress enough. It's hilarious. And then she she gets she's she's on him and she's trying to do CPR and she's like wailing on his chest. And every time she comes up, you can see yes, you see like leather under. You can almost see everything. Stay with me. It's too late. I've seen everything. Yes, exactly. It's gonna go Patrick Stewart. It's it, 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 was, it was too late. I saw everything. <laughs> it's incredible. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, there's a fight, a big fight on like a bridge between the 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 current king and the old ki or the guy who's trying to usurp the throne. His son runs up and murders murder. a guy, and then it's like, I hate it. Uh, yeah, it's like, oh no, away. murder! Uh, I hate it. I'm sad now. I'm a sad boy, uh, and runs away. Um, uh, our, our father, adoptive father figure, starts combating the yeah. the dude with the beard, the usurper dude. Yeah. Uh, looks like he's probably gonna win it or whatever, but it doesn't matter because the freaking demon dude pops up. Ganesh just shows yeah, up. Yeah, it's like, hey. Like, so, and uh, you cannot understand anything he says. No. The voice effect is like, <laughs> 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 it's like, okay, great. Uh, also, so, and we keep cutting back and forth to her trying to save Eris uh, in the, in her <laughs> underwear, and then this whole fight taking place. Anyways, I thought he died anyways, but he doesn't die. He seems to die. Th this movie just it, that that scene just ends. Yes, and then he just appears later in the movie. Fine, captured too. Like, yeah, and and with like no, we don't see like him resurrecting or in, mm. he's just like fine later. I'm like, what is going on? <laughs> The effects of the blood must be wearing off. Does anybody have any more? This guy is dead weight. Anyway, so she, uh, uh, G Ganesh kills her dad, her human dad guy. Uh, he, they get in a sword fight and he, he kills him. Also, and, uh, and I, we already talked about the scene where she's pounding on his chest trying to resurrect him. I was like, mm -hmm. there's also a 0% chance that she is not just fully torqued filming this entire <laughs> yes. scene. Like, there's just a zero Partially percent... Partially straddling this guy, beating his chest. Zero percent chance that it is not a... Very old. scandally clad. <laughs> uh, yeah, just covered in blood, I think. Mm. God, the amount of scenes where they're just like, all right, bring the fake blood. Are you right there, bro? You yeah, like I'm good. I just for... feel like I'm, I am just had an itch in my ear. Okay. Uh, and just, once again, think I'm learning very personal specific things about the writer director of this film you will want your love they love you will want your love they love they love uh 
so anyways, we cut away from Eris, and now she just kills a bunch of Ganesha's men who attack the same woman. Again, we th none of this connects in any way. No. She was with Eris, who's dying. Now she is out in a field, and the woman from earlier with the baby is there. Yes. Again, and, and she once saves again, her I can't again. Can't tell if this what time frame this takes place in. Does it have relevance? Does it mean anything? <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I have no idea. I, and she's also fully clothed now again. Yeah. I who I don't know. I, who knows? Um, and so she she fights all these people off uh, and saves the woman and the baby. Uh, and we get a great arm chop. She cuts off somebody's arm and they get like one of the limbs <laughs> just falls on the ground. It's pretty amazing. Um, meanwhile, the blonde girl has been captured by the demons mm -hmm. and uh, uh, Adonis or whatever is trying to go to save her. And we will get eight million shots of Adonis and the feathered haired dude jogging <laughs> through the, the woods. <laughs> trying to get to her or whatever it's kind of amazing <laughs> uh eris eventually wakes up from his captive and just single-handedly knocks them out right or how yes. far ahead am i jumping well in? you might have jumped a little bit we got to talk about this scene because this is the scene where Krios shows back up the sword trainer, oh in the once weirdest a, scene once again don't know when this is taking place she she saves the baby and the woman with the baby and then Ganesh shows up or no and then she's standing there and Krios shows up yes. and her and Krios go back to back and they're like sword fighting together and kicking ass and taking names and then they get done oh and Krios, he's like told you I'd never leave I you. told you I'd oh, never by leave the you. way I'm back and then he gets his head fucking cut off I'm back I would never leave you now here's what we're going to do Highlander. You could see them walking in mm -hmm. the shot from her perspective. You can see there's an entire army walking up behind him that she does not notice at all. <laughs> and he just gets his fucking head cut off. And then we freeze on her face of her like for like 10 yeah, minutes. We, it's amazing. We, we call that uh, rolling a zero on your initiative. <laughs> it's incredible. Her face. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so then he stabs her with like a little knife or something, but mm -hmm. then she just leaves her. He just leaves her there, and then she gets up and now is trying to go find Eris. Again, this plot makes no sense. It's just people running around in the woods. It, again, they filmed it at a Ren Fair in yeah. a weekend or whatever. Uh, not in a weekend. I bet they filmed this for a very long... There's a lot going on yes. in this movie. I feel like this yes. was one of those like we filmed for six years and then it finally came out kind of <laughs> thing. Space cop. Yeah. <laughs> <took> ten years. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyways... So now some of the bad guys have Eris. Again, we don't mm -hmm. know how he got there because last we saw he was dead, bleeding yes, on the and, ground. And, uh, the people who have him captive are the people who had uh, her captive earlier, the ones who were like bleeding her for the, the blood. Yeah, yeah. So she's trying to get to him because he she's got to get back, I think, to, to, to Ganesh's fortress or whatever she runs into some guys in the wood and jumps on a guy and rips his intestines out and mauls him to death <laughs> what the fuck was that kyle she's like and the other guy's like running away like holy shit she yeah, just like rips why, the guy's why do you need out. a sword yeah you just literally just rips the guy's throat out and then she's chasing the guy who saw her do that and it cuts from her just having ripped we we watched her maul a guy to death with her fingernails and and teeth mm -hmm. covered in blood mm -hmm. she's chasing this guy it cuts and she is completely clean <laughs> yes with the sword now with the sword it makes it's just none of the continuity that means anything and again that could be because it's in not happening i don't i don't i don't yeah. know timeline is fucked yeah. up i don't know <laughs> <laughs> She gets in this big fight in the marketplace where she every guy just runs up to her and lets kind of like in the last movie where they just <laughs> let uh wolf slice their neck. Every guy runs up to her and just like, here's uh, my stomach, please slice it. And uh, she's like, slice, uh, slice, slice, slice. Perfect, like perforated cut here or whatever. Yeah. Uh, and then she squares off with the absolute unit and punches him one time and knocks and him out. out. Come on. Fucking boring. <laughs> <laughs> And 
then she, the guy she's been chasing, like gets up against the door, and I thought we were gonna at least get a great moment because it's like all the bad guys are on the other. This is the king guy. She's mm. just hunting down like the the evil king and like his guys or whatever. Mm -hmm. And the guy like falls up against the door, and we cut to the inside of the door, and I thought we were gonna get the great shot where the sword like Comes stabs through, through the yeah. door with like blood dripping yes. off it. Yeah, no, she just no. kicks the door open. I'm like, okay, that's boring. <laughs> But in this moment, she's literally just the Terminator. Like right now, she's mm. just like walking around murdering yeah, one, everybody. One woman army. Just, yeah, just like, like snapping necks and fucking destroying everybody. It's kind of fun. <laughs> Finally, she's able to get everybody and she saves Eris. Uh, mm. And he's able to calm her bloodthirsty rage. <laughs> yes. He's like, shh. Well, shh. There's a point I need to make. Okay. When it comes. Maybe I'm not the best person for this. When it comes to sparing people, probably not best to do with people who just threaten to kill you. I would agree. I would agree. Uh, like the son, yeah. The, the heiress is uh, trying, he, he breaks uh, out of whatever holdings they have, kills like two guys, and then the uh, the head, uh, second in command of whatever the stupid army is, is like, no, I have a wife and, and children. Yeah. And I, I guess he kind of goes, cool. Well, you owe me their lives and yours now. You you were working for me. Yeah. Do not kill me. I have a wife and two kids. Kill you? You would not switch your allegiance and dedicate your life to me if I did not spare it. Get out of here. It's like, it's like that doesn't seem like a good idea. <laughs> it seems like a very okay. bad idea. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. Um... Uh, but anyway, so he's able to calm her rage. He also recruits the the son who drank the blood, who's very sad about killing <laughs> yes. people. He, he recruits him to their side. More footage of her running through the woods for no purpose. Then we get them ripping off Princess Bride for like two seconds, where they're like, it's it's Feathered Guy and, and Big Boy are like, we got to get in there. Uh, how many guards are there? And he's like, well, there's six. Wow, yeah, it's I can like, take uh, three. And yeah, it's the whole Indigo and, and yeah, Andre the Giant. That leaves half a dozen for me. <laughs> On my best, I can, yeah, whatever. I can take two of them. Good. That only leaves three for me. I can do that. So then they get in there, and it's all the women are tied up. Mm. Uh, our, our big guy starts fighting everybody by himself. Mm. Feathered hair guy has one fucking job. Untie the women and get them the fuck out of there, and he fails so hard. Yes. <laughs> Hurry up, Keith. Oh, no, Fine. Look out! Oh. 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 He tries to untie him for like 10 minutes and then uh, gets fucking beat up by one of the demon guys who sneaks up on him. Um, then we get another, the big gigantic guy comes back and we get another fight with him. Ayla shows up just in time. Eris is about to die. He's yes. getting killed by a guy or this, this is where we start to just go full Highlander and heads are rolling. Heads are rolling. She shows up just in time and is able to save Eris. <laughs> <laughs> And then we get my favorite mo fight scene moment in the whole movie, Kyle. She jumps on this guy's oh, arms. Yes! It's ridiculous. Kyle, she fucking Ratatouille sword fight scene. Yes! <laughs> oh. Jumps on, she starts controlling his arm and is like blocking and swords. Spinning around, sword fighting the end. It's hilarious. It's the stupidest fucking thing. I love it so much. I was dying. Oh my god. Um, uh, she gets stabbed into a tree again. I, I, I who first? What? Once again, yeah, I was like, oh no, she, she must be so upset about that. So upset that she wraps her legs around that guy very seductively while she's stabbed against that tree. Yep. <laughs> it's a thing, a thing with trees and, yep, okay. Um, you just say it, trees and penetration. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so anyways, uh, Adonis gets stabbed uh, and he's dying. Blondie is really pissed about this. I don't know her name because I don't think it's ever said. No. <laughs> Lots more sword fighting, and I'll say, I think I said it earlier, but I'll say it again. The sword fighting could be a lot worse. Even the mm. main actress, like, I was expecting it to look a lot no, worse. You saw all the credits. They had actual swords masters yeah, and, and it, actual stunt coordinators. For, 
I believe specifically the guy who played Krios or whatever was like he's mm. like a he's trained he's like does sword fighting and stuff. And so he it's a rinse fair. So obviously they medieval combat. You yeah, know, they, so. they, they 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 do okay. They, they yeah. Again, it could look. It's not that it looks great, but it could look a lot worse considering yes. how bad so much of this movie looks. But anyways, uh, Eris just runs in and cuts the dude's head off. It's so anticlimactic. Yep. He yep. kills the big villain in like a second. He's just like, gotcha. <laughs> But Ganesh, I don't have to. Hey! Uh, Blondie's sad because uh, the big boy's dead. Uh, and I was like, quick, take off your pants in a plant tourniquet. <laughs> we know that works really well. <laughs> oh, goodness. There and then is. the ending is so mm. disappointing. Yes, it's... Eris just is like, oh, you should go marry that other girl. Yes. Take her home. Be the king you were meant to be. And I'll just... And I, it, like, it's, I a, get, it's a very she ending. Yes, I get what they're going for. She, like, makes the big choice to, like, continue being the protector of the people mm. and to let him go live a normal human life or whatever. So it's very big of her. I get it. Mm -hmm. But it's also like, well, this is fucking stupid. <laughs> Once again, it, it, this follows this follows the uh, consequence area of the, the issue of this film, which is why why are the reapers indebted to the humans to protect them and be like these these protectors of the realm or whatever i i don't know but then she goes back and yeah the movie doesn't care uh, you, you're you, she goes back to her dying mom who's dying because she doesn't have demon blood to drink anymore and i'm mm -hmm. like we'll just give her some of your okay whatever um so but her mom i love is like you are the red reaper and your legend has just begun you are the red reaper and your legend has just begun We, yeah, we go Conan at the very end. Yeah. So thanks for those weirdly prophetic final words, dying witch mom. <laughs> thanks, okay, I yeah. guess. And then we get the final quote of the movie right before the credits where she's like, I once feared the great evil in this world. That evil has come to know me well. And it has learned to fear me. We go, we go full Rorschach at the end. I'm not stuck in here with you. You're stuck in here with me. <laughs> it's amazing. I love it. Uh, and then the credits roll, and that's the end. Kyle, this, uh, I think I'm going to, uh, uh, I don't know. I'm going to say bad, bad. I, uh, uh, no, I'm going to say good, bad. I'm going to say good, bad, because there's two moments that I just can't get enough of. Yes. Naked. <laughs> Leather lingerie CPR and uh, Ratatouille <laughs> sword fight. I could watch those two if, moments. If, if we could just remove about 10 minutes of nonsense, especially with if this that movie was nightmare an hour sequence. Yeah, if this movie was an hour mm -hmm. or an hour 15 instead of an hour 40, it would be perfect. But yeah. uh, it, as is, it's still a little long. I still think I'm going to go good, bad because I appreciate the effort because yes. they tried. Yeah. They oh, tried. oh, something we, we never even mentioned that I didn't notice until the freaking uh, uh, credits. Executive producer UA Ball. Yeah, UA Ball. Which is what I'm thinking is the Italian unit uh, oh, filming. Oh, yeah. Which would be like which the aerial stuff, Airy probably Bell. the green screen yeah, stuff yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. I thought that was very fascinating. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Uwe Boll, look at him. Wow, incredible. Anyways, that's <laughs> working his way from making shitty films to helping produce them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just truly involved in everything terrible in cinema. Uh, good for him. That's going to do it for this episode. As always, you can do a giant favor. We're like, batteries like dying. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's going to do it for this episode. As always, you can do a giant favor by hanging over to patreon.com slash GBRBB. Support us for a couple bucks a month and get access to bonus content, early access, all that kind of stuff. Go to tpublic.com, buy what? merch, what? including that shirt and other stuff. I have a podcast called This Films that we're talking about movies that are based on books. The most recent episode when this is out will have definitely at this point been Fifty Shades Freed. Uh, I, I know for sure that's true this time. Um, so go check that out. The final uh, climactic. Uh, Ryan's brain is melting. It's, uh, we got to get this. This is it. This is the batteries like literally. About uh, to Twitch. Die. You can check us out on Twitch. Twitch.tv, Twitch thing things. on the thing. Uh, also, Ra oh, the if Viper it's not Sniper. out, Wrath of the Viper Sniper should be out, if not already, in the next week or two. So look out. Go watch Wrath of the Viper Sniper, and we'll be talking about it before too long. That's it. The end. Until next time, keep watching movies. Hey, yeah, and go check it out. Especially uh, Legend of the Red it's, Reaper. It is some fun garbage. Yeah.